Before I begin, I just got to say, how about those national champion Wisconsin Badgers? Now, what an amazing run for the volleyball team. Now, Chancellor Blank, Provost Schultz, esteemed members of the Board of Regents, faculty and senior class officers, I thank you for the profound honor of participating in these proceedings, inviting me back to the college that I love, and more importantly, I join you in congratulating the University of Wisconsin's winter class of 2021. Now, my gratitude for the privilege of addressing our newest alumni as today's keynote speaker only grows upon my recognition of its improbability. Yes, to a handful of Wando's bartenders circa 2001, that improbability is rooted in the sheer quantity of fish bowls I consumed. And of course, as the CNN attorneys who had to approve these remarks would like me to make clear, only after my 21st birthday in accordance with Wisconsin state laws. But amid the pomp and circumstance of such a special day, this is certainly no occasion to finally confess to my mom and dad, both of whom are watching this online with my brother today, that my student ID balance actually required such frequent replenishment because I could use those funds for spotted cows at the terrace. And nor would it be appropriate to mention that parallel to my world-class education here, I brushed up on math by calculating 75% discounts on specials during flip night at State Street Broads. Instead, today is the day for me to focus on the improbability of my presence on this stage and on the set at CNN Studios as a proud son of two immigrant parents and as someone who credits the lessons gleaned from my upbringing and my years here in Madison as paramount in achieving my goals. Indeed, the unlikely journey to this rostrum before a crowd of thousands of people began in my dad's modest village roughly 15,000 miles away from Madison, in a village whose size is easily dwarfed by the upper deck here at the Cole Center. As a boy, my dad's family rented a one-room house in which seven people slept on floor mattresses, an arrangement actually, come to think of it, might have sounded fairly spacious to some of my college buddies and perhaps some of you who lived on Langdon Street. But in all seriousness, uh, electricity wasn't obtainable for my dad until middle school, and education not accessible beyond high school. Yet driven by an ambition to emulate his father, who often made house calls by bullet cart as the only doctor within a 10-mile radius, my dad went on to graduate at the top of his class and attend medical school on a monthly allowance of 10 rupees. My mom, meanwhile, worked at a bank in Bangalore to help cover the electric bills back home, and when they both moved to Chicago, the high cost and complications of making a simple phone call meant correspondence with family had to take place through letters that could linger in transit for up to 30 days. But what my parents' lifestyle lacked in grandeur, or frankly just some pretty basic necessities, they made up for in grit, in determination, in drive. A drive that continues to inspire my unlikely path from a student here on Bascom Hill to a CNN reporter on Capitol Hill. And so while my parents would have to wait for a full four weeks as for, to see a single letter find its way to family in India, they would have to wait no more than one generation for their son to find his way onto this elite and beautiful campus in Wisconsin and subsequently onto cable television in Washington. Now to be sure, mere passion alone is not enough to realize ambitions. One's drive must also be accompanied by a great degree of risk. For my parents, a passion to pursue academic opportunities available only on the other side of the world required a daunting departure away from a large family and lots of close friends. I'm a beneficiary of such boldness and feel especially grateful for the risks they took as I consider how it helped lead me to someone essential in my life, my wife Archana, as well as our twins, Sonia and Sanjay, who are all here with us this morning. Similarly, for our graduates, a passion to pursue opportunities only on the other side of a risk will require a departure away from the proverbial comfort zone. But as you prepare to evaluate whether that risk is worth it, I urge you to consider an observation put forth by T.S. Eliot, whose writings have been compared to my maternal grandfather's literary works in our native language of Kannada. Perhaps like me, my grandfather found motivation in a particular refrain in which Eliot remarks, 
I do not see how anyone can go very far who is not ready to risk complete failure. Now, as a reporter who values strict adherence to the truth, I stand here not with the guarantee that your risk will always or even frequently be rewarded with good that is evident at the time you take that risk. Rather, I su suspect that in some instances, you will have to wait for hindsight to reveal how setbacks serve as springboards. As a marketing major who took classes at Granger Hall and graduated with a business degree, yet whose journalism career was spurred by a decision to take a chance, try something new as a sports writer for the Badger Herald while I was a freshman, even though I had done nothing quite like this before, it is equally as truthful for me to report that while daunting risks won't always materialize into meaningful rewards, meaningful rewards will seldom materialize without daunting risks. And until those rewards are visible, your failures ought not blind your foresight of what is possible. Right alongside its cutting edge curricula as a top ranked research institution and one of the best schools in the country, the University of Wisconsin teaches a master's class in this timeless value of perseverance, one I will forever carry with me. As with our athletics program during my time as a student, including back-to-back -back Rose Bowl titles, a bracket-busting Final Four one run, I've been blessed to have some wins throughout my career, which effectively started here in Madison. For Harrison's very kind introduction, I've certainly come a long way from the Badger Herald, where my very first scoop entailed IDing the, the notorious streaker who burst across Camp Randall on Ron Dane's record-busting rushing day, wearing nothing more than face and body paint on what was a very, very chilly fall day. Now, he just happened to be my close friend who attended the game with me, so... Uh, S suffice to say, uh, a Pulitzer Prize wasn't exactly waiting for me in the mailbox back at La Ciel. But on a serious note, I'd like to acknowledge all the other lifelong friendships formed as a Wisconsin student, including with my Augie's buddy, Virgil Abloh, who sadly passed away last month. Graduates, as you're ready to assume an eternal connection with your alma mater as UW alumni, I implore you to also remain close with the people you met here. Don't just cherish these bonds, invest the energy to preserve and build on them as well. For me, after my stints at the Herald, WSUM, and NBC 15 here in Madison, I managed to go from identifying streakers to interviewing speakers, Nancy Pelosi and Paul Ryan, as well as towering congressional figures like John McCain, Harry Reid, Mitch McConnell, and Chuck Schumer. And along the ride from a terrorist chair at the Union to a front row seat at the highest levels in American politics, I moderated debates in some of the most consequential races in the country, broadcast live from the U.S. Capitol during the harrowing January 6th attack, and have been fortunate to receive recognitions and awards for my reporting. But dwarfing all that, of course, is the fact that, yes, I'm the guy who, in front of the cameras last year, survived an attack from a vicious cicada and screamed obscenities. And I also first realized what true fame was, like when somebody stopped me and asked me to take a selfie with them, and then he said to me, I love what you do, Sanjay Gupta. <laughs> Sanjay is pretty great. But absent from the biography you heard here earlier this morning is the rejection required to form it, rejection that paved the path to my current role as CNN's chief congressional correspondent. Yes, as with Minnesota's athletics program, my career has also been filled with its fair share of disappointments in the form of dozens of job rejections. Rejections that were deflating and certainly could have been defining. But the Wisconsin way isn't just how we jump around before the fourth quarter begins, it's also how we stick around after it ends. For our visitors who may be unfamiliar with the famed fifth quarter festivities, or for some of the new grads who may have imbibed just a few too many spatacovs to recall what exactly transpires after tailgates, as many as 30 to 40,000 fans stay in their seats for a post-game performance, and what makes the fifth quarter so special is our insistence on remaining in the stands regardless of the result. In no other stadium, collegiate or otherwise, would scores of fans think to stay long after a game concludes, much less to enjoy ourselves after defeat. But at Camp Randall, win or lose, we stay put. And we face the music after a rare loss, 
the music that is of our beloved Badger Band, we dance, we celebrate, we stay. The tradition, I think, offers a telling window into how Badgers approach adversity on our field in Madison and how you ought to approach it in your respective fields well beyond. That response, challenging as it may be to cultivate when the stakes are elevated from a college football game to your individual purpose in life, should become a reflex. Yes, job rejections or career complications may require you to change your route, but these difficulties must never tempt you to abandon your destination. These difficulties must never tempt you to abandon your purpose. As Mike Lacrone, the former director of the marching band who created the fifth quarter, recounted after he explained the tradition to some of his counterparts at other colleges, he said, they sort of looked at me, shook their heads, and said, no, I don't think we can do it here. That's Wisconsin, and they're a little bit crazy. I can recall similar senti sentiments along the way from working at a little-known trade publication to outlets like Politico and CNN. Indeed, employers would caution I was too young, and before even considering a major organization, I should start in a small town, followed by a mid-sized market. But I thought otherwise, and I stayed in DC. That decision could be discouraging at times, particularly when I would Xerox copies of my article, send out clips to prospective employers, follow up with a slew of emails and phone calls only to hear nothing back. Many didn't bother to respond. Yet if I had listened to that silence or the skepticism it represented, if I had listened to conventional wisdom rather than to my calling in life, I would have forfeited a place among my peers in the television news industry. And as someone who has been humbled by having my hopes dashed repeatedly, I know it takes a great deal of courage to view our mishaps as bellows that can nourish rather than extinguish the embers of our ambition. But that courage is precisely what characterizes the University of Wisconsin and its alums. For as we know, fortitude isn't always necessarily found in the throes of a fight, but in one's ability to withstand the wake of defeat. In our audacity to stay the course, no matter how bleak it may appear, in our resilience, in our resolve, a resolve that has only redoubled for our graduates who have endured the pandemic during your time here at Wisconsin. Now, down the decades since Lacrone introduced the fifth quarter tradition in the late 70s to help lift the spirits of a dejected fan base, it took a, quite a few bit of lopsided seasons for Coach Barry Avalos to come, around, come along, renew our winning culture, and allow this long-suffering Chicago Bears fan to finally enjoy some sustained success on the field. And similarly, down the decades since I would wait in line for a few hours just to speak with editors for a few minutes at career fairs and where my writing samples were flippantly tossed into a mountain of other resumes, it took quite a bit of time for informational interviews to generate job interviews. It took quite a few tries to land a position I was initially turned down for. But when those letter offers, offer letters finally arrived, it wasn't necessarily because my writing or my reporting abilities had changed, it was because my determination didn't. And so as you embark on the pur pursuit of your purpose in life, know that the fragile idealism for which fresh college graduates are sometimes dismissed may soon meet the pragmatism to which you are supposed to conform. Know that convention may try to keep your convictions and confidence in check. And be forewarned that the status quo is out there, waiting to tell you what you're supposed to do upon stumbling. But when these trials tempt you to take no for an answer, when they tempt you to pack up and head for the exits, be sure to also remember what we do here in Madison. Remember that we jump around when we can see the good. Remember that we stick around when we can't yet. And remember that as you prepare to enter the world, UW alums like me will be cheering you on with pride as you work to enrich it. On Wisconsin.